Act One of The Litigants by Jean Racine. Translated by Robert Bruce Boswell, 1864 to 1933. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Introduction to The Litigants This play, which is neither a comedy nor a farce, but has elements in common with each, was first performed in 1668 at Paris and afterwards at Versailles. Its humour in a great measure depends upon the mock gravity which masks its ridiculous features, the language and style are those of comedies, while the tone of exaggeration and the absurdity of the situations belong more fitly to burlesque. It is a French adaptation of The Wasps of Aristophanes, to which the wit of Rabelais and of Fertier, author of the Roman Bourgeois, have contributed not a little. Racine's own experience of law and lawyers was derived from the suit in which he had been involved about the priory of Epinay, during the course of which he picked up a number of barbarous terms which, to quote his own words, neither my judges nor I ever properly understood. Le plaideur, though it fell rather flat at first, has proved to be by far the most popular of all Racine's plays. Characters Dandon, a judge read by alan mapstone leander son of danda read by adrian stevens chicano a citizen read by mike menelikas isabel daughter of chicano read by hanna panamarenko the countess read by sonia petit jean a house porter read by todd Linta May, a clerk, read by Greg Giordano. The Prompter, read by David Purdy. Stage Directions, read by Son of the Exiles. The scene is laid in a town of Lower Normandy. The Litigants, a comedy, Act One, Scene One. Petit Jean hauling along a big bag full of law papers. Ah, oh, what a fool is he who trusts the future, who laughs at morn will cry before the night. A judge took me last year into his service, fetched me from our men to be Swiss porter. These Normans thought to laugh at my expense. When we're with wolves, one learns to howl, they say. I played a wily hand, though a poor Picard, and cracked my whip loudly as any other. All the fine gentlemen would, hat in hand, call me good Monsieur Petit Jean, with flatteries long as your arm. But honors without coin are not. I acted like a playhouse porter in vain they knocked and bowed their heads uncovered save with a silver key they might not enter no money then no swiss to unlock the door tis true my master's pocket took a scantling sometimes there came a reckoning twas my charge to purchase hay and candles for the house I did not lose by that, at all events. I might have bought the straw into the bargain. His heart was too much in his work, however. The more's the pity. First in court, and last, each day, and often quite alone. Believe me, he'd like to sleep there without sup or morsel. I'd say at times, Dear Monsieur Perindendin, Excuse my freedom, you get up too early. He who would travel far should spare his steed, drink, eat, and sleep, and make a fire to last. He took no heed, and so well have his vigils repaid him 
that they say his brain is cracked. One up, one down, he wants to judge us all. He's always mumbling some strange gibberish, I know not what, and will, by hook or crook, take with him into bed his wig and gown. He had his cock killed in a fit of rage because it didn't wake him up in time. He said a suitor, whose affair went ill, had with a bribe corrupted the poor bird. Poor man, this sentence did him little good. His son all talk of business has tabooed. He makes us guard him closely night and day. Or else, good-bye, he's off, and in the court. Heaven knows, he's quick enough to give the slip. And I, no sleep for me, I'm growing thin, wretchedly thin. I stretch my arms and yawn. But watch who will, this bag shall be my pillow. Tonight, in faith, I'll take my ease for once. No one can blame me sleeping in the streets. Oh, let's go to sleep. He lies down on the ground. Scene two. L'antime, Petit Jean. What ho, friend, Petit Jean? L'antime. Aside. He's afraid I'm catching cold. My stars, what to brings you in the street so early? I'm not a stork to stand upon one leg, forever on the watch, hearing him shout. What bellows, too? I think the man's possessed. Excellent. When I scratch my head and tell him I'd like to go to sleep, he gravely says, Lodge a petition how you wish to sleep. It makes me sleepy but to talk of it. Good night. Good night, forsooth. Deuce take it, if. But hark, I think I hear a noise up there. Scene 3. Tantin, l'antime, petit jean. Tantin, at the window. Petit jean, l'intime. L'antime, de petit jean. Hush! I'm alone. My keepers prove defaulters, heaven be praised. Give time enough, they'll enter an appearance. Now for a jail delivery through the window. Out of the court there. Ha! Well jumped. You're caught, sir. Thieves, thieves. We've got you now, and won't let go. There's no good bawling. Help! They're murdering me. Scene 4. Leander, Dandin, Lantime, Petit Jean. I hear my father in the street. Quick, lights! Father, what brings you out at such an hour? Whither away so fast? I want to judge. Judge whom? The world's asleep. Except myself. Why, what a heap of bags. They're all about him. It will be quite three months ere I come back, and these are my provisions, bags and papers. But you'll want food? There's a refreshment stall. Where will you sleep then, father? On the bench. No, father, you'd much better stay at home. Lie in your own bed, eat at your own table, listen to reason, and let that persuade you. And for your health? I like to be unwell. You're bad enough already. Take some rest. You'll soon be nothing but mere skin and bones. Rest? Would you have me rule myself by you? Think you a judge has naught to do but pace the streets like any fop, and make good cheer, gambling all day and dancing all night? No, money does not drop into one's hands. Each of your ribbons cost me an award, 
yet you're ashamed to be a judge's son and ate the nobleman dandor my friend see the ancestral portraits on my walls all of them wearing the judicial robes no other line is half so good compare a judge's fees with what a marquis gets wait till the year's end and then count your gains a nobleman's no better than a pillar inside my hall the smartest swell among them will stand there blowing on his frozen fingers his nose close muffled or a hand thrust down into his pocket and to warm himself he'll turn my spit that's how they fare poor boy your angel mother never taught you so my babonette i weep to think of her how not a single sitting she would miss how all her life she never left my side and took away full often heaven knows what she would have rather pocketed the napkins the waiter brought than gone home empty-handed that's how to raise a family be gone you're nothing but a fool you'll soon catch cold if you stand there take him back petit jean put him to bed shut every door and window making all fast and keep your master warm you must have stronger railings fixed up there what go to bed thus without legal forms first get an order signed how i'm to sleep lie down at least pending proceedings father i'll go but mark me to enrage you all i will not sleep a wink all well and good don't let him be alone stay lantime scene five leander lantime i wish to have some words with you in private you'll need a keeper next i need one now alas i'm quite as crazy as my father you want to judge leander pointing to isabel's dwelling enough of mystery you know that house there now i understand you tis early in the day to go a-courting you want me to discuss miss isabel i've told you often she's discreet and pretty but then consider chicano her father consumes in lawsuits well nigh all her fortune he sues each man he meets i think he'll bring all france before the bar ere he has done he's taken lodgings next door to his judge one would be always pleading and the other still on the bench nor will your case be settled till he has sued you all priest lawyer bridegroom i note as well as you in spite of all i die for isabel well marry her you only have to speak and it is done not quite so soon as you imagine no her father is a tartar and i dread him unless you are an usher or attorney one may not see his daughter she poor girl shut up at home as in a prison mourns while youth is spent in vain regrets her portion in lawsuits and my passion's flame in smoke yes he will ruin her if this goes on now don't you know some honest forger fellow who will serve his friend for a consideration some zealous bailiff there are plenty of them still to be had ah sir if my poor father were yet alive he'd be the man to suit you he made more in one day than would another in six months on his wrinkled brow were writ his exploits he'd have stopped a prince's carriage and taken him himself 
he pocketed nineteen of every twenty lashes given in the whole province i'm my father's son how can i help you you i better maybe than any bailiff would you serve her father with a false writ hmm give the girl a letter both in my line why not hark someone calls will think of this some other time scene six chicano petit jean chicano going away and then coming back labri secure the house well i shall soon return let no one mount the stairs while i'm away see that this letter is sent by next mail southward go and choose three fine rabbits from the hutches and take them this forenoon to my attorney if his clerk comes give him a glass of wine and let him have that bag beside my window i wonder if that's all oh uh, should there call uh, a tall thin man uh, you know him uh, serves as a witness and swears for me at need asking to see me tell him to wait the judge i fear has gone out it's nearly four but i will knock petit jean half opening the door who's there i wish to see your master petit jean shutting the door not at home chicano knocking at the door his secretary can i speak a word to him petit jean shutting the door no chicano knocking again well his porter i am he pray drink my health sir petit jean taking money much good may it do you shutting the door but return to-morrow give me back my money in truth the world is getting sadly wicked i've known the time when lawsuits gave no trouble six crowns well spent would win me half a dozen it seems to me my whole estate to-day would hardly be enough to bribe a porter but i perceive the countess of pimbesh approaches surely on some pressing business scene seven the countess Shikano. there's no admittance ma'am didn't i say so if faith my lackeys make me lose my senses scold as i will they won't get up for me and all the household sleeps till i awake it he must have told his servant to deny him i've tried to get a word with him these two days but all in vain my adversary's strong and makes me fear after my treatment you sir must not complain rights on my side however oh what injustice i appeal to you ma'am sir you should know this shameful treachery a trivial cause at bottom let me tell you uh, the facts are these some twenty years ago a certain donkey crossed a field of mine rolled in the grass and did a lot of damage against him then i lodged an information had him arrested and an arbitrator named at two trusses he assessed the damage done to the hay a year passed by and then i found myself non-suited and appealed they sued upon the judgment until the case came on for hearing madam mark this well drolichon let me tell you he's no fool gets at some cost a judgment on request and so i gain my case what happens then the trickster on his side stops execution meanwhile another incident occurs defendant's foul invades the self-same meadow order of court to draw up a report of how much hay a hen can eat a day added to the previous case things being thus in a statu quo the hearing is referred to april eighth or ninth year fifty six i take fresh action furnish and procure pleas declarations arguments and warrants experts reports injunctions writs of error statements of grievance and fresh evidence with affidavits royal letters patent and confutations then a dozen rules and writs are issued we produce new proofs and replications follow judgment given i lose my case with costs three hundred pounds to pay is that the justice of the law and after twenty years i've one resource left the court of chancery is open to me i won't give in but you as i perceive have a suit pending would to heaven i had 
I'll burn my boats. I pay three hundred pounds, all for a truss or two of hay. My lawsuits have all been stopped, though there were only left four or five little ones, against my husband, my father, and my children. Oh, the pity of it! They spared no dirty trick that could be thought of. Nor was that all. They've got a judge's order by which I am restrained, my food and clothing provided me, from going to law again. From going to law? Yes, sir from going to law that's monstrous sir i'm driven to despair to tie the hands of such a noble lady but the allowance madam is it large twould keep me very comfortably sir but life is worthless without going to law shall knaves then eat us up body and soul and we say nothing tell me please how long it is since you began i can't remember tis thirty years or more that's not so long alas and what may be your age your looks seem young some sixty years just the right age to plead in courts let them go on they'll find they have not seen the end of me i'll sell the last stitch of my back sooner than yield listen i'll tell you what you ought to do i trust you sir as if you were my father i'd have you see my judge yes sir i'll go cast yourself at his feet yes there i'll fall i'm quite resolved be kind enough to hear me yes yes you comprehend my situation have you done madam yes then seek my judge and without ceremony oh how good you are if still you speak i must be silent you overpower me with gratitude get access to my judge and say yes there you are again uh, say to him sir yes sir tie me i won't be tied what stuff and nonsense i say i won't you have strange fancies madam no never wait till you have heard me out i'll go to law or know the reason why but i'll never let them tie me sir when once a woman's head has got a craze crazy yourself madam tie me indeed madam the fellow grows impertinent but madam rascal with his dirty tricks advising me madam with all his talk about the donkey go and watch your hay this is too much fool oh for witnesses Scene eight. Petit Jean, the Countess, Chicano. A pretty row they're making at our door. Go and raise storms of this sort farther off. Be witness, sir. This gentleman's a fool. You hear her. Pray remember that expression. Petit Jean, to the Countess. You oughtn't to say that. He's a fine fellow to call me crazy. Crazy? that was wrong why do you call her names twas good advice that i was giving her oh indeed that i should get tied up fie sir she would not hear all that i had to say fie madame am i to be abused by him a scold peace villain who dares not go to law what's that to you abominable swindler meddler thief stop stop why that beats all ten thousand devils <laughs> bailiffs police oh for a constable they must be all tied up plaintiffs and judge end of act one act two of the litigants by jean racine Translated by Robert Bruce Boswell, 1864 to 1933. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two, Scene One. Leander, Lentemain. I can't do everything. 
there's one stroke more needed and you must play the magistrate if i'm the officer if you'll but don a gown and follow in my steps you'll find means to hold converse change that auburn wig these people do not know of your existence and when they come to wait upon your father day will have scarcely dawned you've cause to praise that precious countess whom my lucky star brought just when she was wanted seeing me she fell into the trap and bade me serve a writ on shikanu and summon him before the court for certain words of his whereby he wished to make her pass for mad too mad to be at large with other insults such as are wont to garnish writs of slander but you say nothing of my fine get-up don't i look like a sheriff's officer ay that you do i can't think how it is i feel i'm twenty times the man i was well here's the writ and here sir is your letter miss isabel shall have it that i promise but if you'd have this marriage contract signed you must present yourself without delay pretend to make inquiries on the matter while making love under her father's nose don't let the writ change places with the letter no he shall have the writ and she the billet go in lantimer goes and knocks at isabel's door scene two isabel lantimer who knocks a friend aside the voice is hers tis isabel who is it sir you want i have a little writ here grant me please the honour miss of serving it on you excuse me sir i cannot understand it my father will be here soon speak to him is he not then within miss no he is not the warrant miss is made out in your name you doubtless take me sir for some one else i never went to law but now it's cost and if the world loved it no more than i do you and your like would need some new employment farewell but pray allow i'll allow nothing this is no writ nonsense it is a letter that's worse but read it no you shall not catch me the gentleman who wrote it was farewell sir leander not so loud who did it say it's hard to make her listen faith i'm now quite out of breath oh pardon my surprise then to me give it you'd have slammed the door right in my face who would have known twas you in this disguise give it i like politeness please give it oh what a plague don't give it then go take your letter with you you shall have it but next time don't you be in such a hurry scene three chicano isabel lantimer yes yes she called me fool and thief i've charged the sheriff's officer to take my thanks and i'll soon serve her with a dainty dish i should be vexed were i obliged to send a second time or if she sued me first but who is this man talking to my daughter she reads a letter it must be a lover's i will go near shall i believe you master is he sincere he cannot sleep o nights no more than your papa he'll perceiving she can know make you see how those gain not who go to law with him isabel perceiving she can know my father to lantimer you might tell them if they sue i can defend myself tearing the letter stay look you thus i treat the writ you bring me what is this it was a writ that she was reading then she'll yet do credit to her family and hold her own come to my arms my child i'll buy you the complete guide to the law but hang it all writs shouldn't be torn up 
Isabel to Lantemay. I fear them not, and you may say as much. Eh, let them do their worst. It won't displease me. Don't vex yourself, my dear. Isabel to Lantemay. Good day, sir. Scene four. Chicano, Lantemay. Lantemay preparing to write. Now then, I must draw up a statement. Uh, sir, excuse her. She's ignorant, and I can piece together these fragments, if you'll kindly wait a moment. No. I shall soon decipher it. I'll help you. I've got another copy. Most obliging, I'm sure. But somehow, the more I look at you, the less I'm able to recall your face, though I know heaps of bailiffs. Make inquiries. I'm not a bad hand at my little jobs. Maybe. Who sent you? A distinguished lady, who much esteems you, and with all her heart, desires you to come, at my request, and say one word by way of reparation. Of reparation? I have injured no one. I well believe it, sir. You are too good. What do you want, then? She would have you, sir, do her the honor, before witnesses, of owning her possessed of sound good sense. Good gracious! Tis my countess! At your service. Give her my best respects. I thank you, sir. Yes, pray assure her I have sent a bailiff to satisfy her claims as she deserves. What? Is the injured party to be punished? Let's see what song she sings. Hmm. The 16th of January, for having falsely said, prompted by evil motives, that the high and noble dame, the Countess of Pimbesh, ought to be kept in durance as insane. Uh, be it now declared, the above-named Jeremy shall straightway to the aforesaid lady's house betake himself, and before witnesses, not less than four, besides a notary, in a clear voice acknowledge her sound judgment, signed, Good. Is he your sheriff? At your service. Aside. I'll face it out in brazen impudence. I never saw a writ signed good before. Who's Mr. Good? Sir? I say you're a rogue. I beg your pardon. I'm an honest man. Uh, the most consummate knave between this and Rome. Tis not for me to contradict you, sir, but you will have to pay for defamation. Pay? Yes, with blows. You are too gentle, sir. You'll pay me in good coin. My head will burst if he goes on. Take that! A box on the ear. I'll write it down. That the said Jeremy, with other outrages, struck me a bailiff, and thereby knocked my hat into the mud. Chicano, giving him a kick. Take that, too! Thanks. As good as ready money. I want some badly. Not content with that. Followed it up by giving me a kick. Bravo! Moreover, the aforesaid Jeremy tried in a rage to tear this present statement. Come, my dear sir, this goes on splendidly. Don't stop. You rascal! Do just what you please. Give me the stick next, if you would oblige me. Chicano, holding up a stick. Yes, that I will, and see if you're a bailiff. Lantemay, preparing to write. Quick, hit me then. I have four hungry children. Oh, forgive me, you're a bailiff, sure enough. But the most clever man may be deceived. I wronged you sadly, but will make amends. Yes, you're a bailiff. Sir, a thorough bailiff. Your hand. Such men as you have my respect. And my late father always brought me up in fear of heaven and of bailiffs, sir. No, you don't beat me on such easy terms. Don't draw up a complaint, sir. Words of insult. A stick raised, ears boxed, and a kick. Nay, rather, give them me back, please. They are far too precious. I wouldn't part with them for fifty pounds. Scene five. Leander, dressed as a magistrate, Chicano, Lantemé. Here comes his worship in the nick of time. Your presence, sir, is just what we require. 
this gentleman has made me a small present and given me a tremendous box on the ear what you sir me i say item a kick besides the names that he bestows on me and have you witnesses put your hand here sir feel how my ear and cheek are tingling still ha taken in the act assault and battery i'm in a nasty fix his daughter too at least she said she was tore up my writ saying she was pleased to get it and defied us to do our worst Leander to Lantenay. Then bring the daughter here. They seem a contumacious family. Chicano aside. These people must most surely have bewitched me. May I be hanged if I know one of them. Assault a bailiff. Here's the little rebel. Scene six. Leander, Isabel, Chicano, Lantenay. Lantemay to Isabel. Do you recognize him? Well, miss, so it's you who just now treated with supreme contempt our officer and haughtily defied us. Your name, please. Isabel. So, write it down. Your age? Eighteen. In fact, a little more, but that's no matter. Say, have you a husband? No, sir. You're laughing write down that she laughed but don't talk of husbands sir to girls like her you've naught to do with family affairs write that he interrupted nay i did not intend to do so isabel take care what you say next pray don't alarm yourself we do not wish to vex you answer freely did not this bailiff here hand you a paper just now that's right sir good and so he did and did you dare to tear it up unread i read it sir ha huh, good again leander to lantame right on to isabel what made you tear it sir i was afraid my father would take it to heart too much and its perusal might inflame his wrath and you're the girl so frightened at the law mere mischief so you did not tear the paper in scorn or in contempt of those who sent it to you? I have neither anger nor contempt to them. Leander to Lantemay? Write that down. She takes after me. She answers very well. You show, however, an evident contempt for men of law. A lawyer's gown used to offend my eyes, but that aversion now grows somewhat less. That's right, my child. You shall be married well, and at no distant date, if it costs nothing. You then consent to meet the claims of justice? Sir, I'll do anything to give you pleasure. Sir, make her sign her name to that. Will you confirm your promise when occasion serves? You may trust Isabel to keep your word. Sign, then. That's well. Justice is satisfied. There now, will you, sir, add your name? With pleasure. I sign without a look to all she says. Leander aside to Isabel. All has gone well. Success smiles on my wishes. He signs a marriage contract in due form, and his own hand will prove his condemnation. Chicano aside. What is he saying to her? Charm, no doubt, with her good sense farewell be ever wise as you are fair my man escort her home come sir where now where i shall lead you sir but where you'll soon know in the king's name come what's this scene seven leander chicano petition i say has anybody seen my master? Which way went he? By the door or window? Don't tell me. His son is vanished. And for the father, deuce knows where he is. He kept on telling me he wanted spices. 
I, like a simpleton, ran to the pantry to find the pepper box, and he, meanwhile, bolted. Scene 8. Thorned in, at a garret window on the roof, Leander, Chicano, Lantemé, Petit Jean. Peace! Silence in court, I say! Good heavens! Look, he's up there on the gutter. Pray, who are you? What is your business, sirs? Who are these gownsmen? Are you barristers? Speak. You will see. He's going to judge the cats. If you have not yet seen my secretary, ask him if he has told me of your case. I must get hold of him and bring him down. Keep your eyes, bailiff, on your prisoner. Oh, you, sir. Silence, if you love your life, and follow me. Scene 9. The Countess, Thorndin, Chicano, Lantemé. Quick, what is your petition? Without your order, I have been arrested. Good gracious, is that he among the garrets? What is he doing there? Hearing petitions, now is your chance. Sir, having been assaulted and grievously maltreated, I come here to make complaint to you. As I do also. You, you see, see before, before you, you the, the offending, offending party. party. Faith, I will introduce my grievance too. Sir, Sir I have a little writ to, to bring before you. you. Let us in turn prefer our several claims. His claim indeed. All that he says is falsehood. What wrongs have you sustained? The, the grossest, grossest slanders. slanders and blows sir which is more than they can say one of your nephews is my cousin sir my case is known to father corden sir sir i'm the bastard of your surgeon barber and what are you a countess i'm a bailiff and i a burgess thorned in retiring from the garret window on the roof speak i hear you all sir look you there he has given us the slip alas what's this is the court closed already i've not had time to say two words to him scene ten leander no longer dressed as a magistrate chicano the countess lantemé be kind enough to leave us now in peace Mayn't I come in, sir? Not while I'm alive. Why so? I shall not occupy an hour, or two at most. There's no admittance, sir. Tis well to shut the door upon this brawler, but I... You cannot be admitted, madam. <gasps> yes, sir, I will. Doubtful. I'm sure of it. How? Through a window? through the door we'll see if i must do so i'll stay here till midnight scene eleven leander chicano the countess lantemé petit jean petit jean to leander no one will hear him now do what he will i've put him in a room close to the cellar one word will do as well as will a hundred you cannot see my father. Oh, indeed. What if I say I must, and that's the truth? Thorndin shows himself at the air hole of the cellar. But look, heaven sends him to our aid once more. Up from the cellar. Surely he's possessed. Sir. But for you and your impertinence, I should not be here. Sir. Go away. Don't bother. Will you, sir? You split my head. I've given orders. Hold your tongue, I say. That there be sent you. Take him off to prison. A cask of wine. Hmm, I'll have none of it. Excellent, Muscat. 
please repeat your case leander to lentemain we must encompass them on all sides sir nothing but lies is what you'll hear from him sir tis the truth i say zounds let her speak pray hear me sir allow me to take breath sir i feel suffocated please look here she'll be the death of me you drag me down take care i'm falling both upon my word have fallen in the cellar fly there quick run to their help but i intend at least now to chicanose inside to keep him there till morning lentime take care of him the air-hole must be watched go i'll do that scene twelve the countess leander the wretch will prepossess him in his favour she speaks through the cellar air-hole pray believe nothing that he tells you sir he is a liar and has no witnesses what's that you say to them they may be dying for aught we know he'll make him swallow all he chooses let me enter no you shan't i see the musket wine works upon you as much as on your father's inclination oh, patience i will protest in legal form against the judge also against the cask go then and let us have a little peace what fools i never met such company scene thirteen dandin leander lentime where are you running sir you'll hurt yourself limping along like that i want to judge no father you must let your wounds be dressed quick fetch a surgeon bring him into court stop father stop oh i can see what's up you mean to make of me just what you please casting off filial reverence and regard you will not let me judge a single case have done take this bag be quick there gently my father we must find some compromise if judging is your only joy in life and you feel bound to sit upon the bench there is no need to leave your house for that fulfil your favourite office here with us don't ridicule a judge's dignity i do not wish to be a dummy sir nay you shall judge and that without appeal in civil causes as in criminal you can hold sittings twice a day and all that passes in our midst be brought before you a servant brings a dirty glass you fine him or if he breaks one you award a whipping that's something it deserves consideration but who's to pay me for my services their wages will be your security that's to the point your scheme seems feasible and as regards a neighbour scene fourteen dandin leander lentemain petition stop there catch him leander to lentemain ah have you let my prisoner escape no fear of that i am undone your dog ginger has just run off with a fat capon and eaten it one can keep nothing from him good here's a case for him to try help run all join in the pursuit and catch the thief no noise arrest the offender quietly this household robber must be judged severely and made a notable example father 
with due formalities i wish the affair to be conducted with opposing counsel and there are none well we must make some then there are your porter and your secretary they will prove first-rate advocates i fancy they're very ignorant oh not at all sir i'll send him fast asleep as well as any don't expect much from me for i know nothing this is your first case we'll prepare it for you but i can't read then you shall have a prompter let's go and make us ready we must close our eyes to bribes our ears to all corruption you master petitjean are for the plaintive and you master lintime for the defendant End of Act Two. Act Three of The Litigants by Jean Racine, translated by Robert Bruce Boswell, eighteen sixty four to nineteen thirty three. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One, Leander, Chicanot, the Prompter. Yes, sir, twas thus, I say, they treated me. I knew not either magistrate or tipstaff. Tis true, each word I speak. Yes, I believe you, but were I you, I'd let the matter drop. You should not drive them to extremities, or you will do yourself more harm than them. You've spent three-quarters of your whole estate already, sir, in stuffing lawyers' bags, and in a vain pursuit that only harms you. Indeed, you give me excellent advice, and I intend ere long to profit by it. But first, I crave your kindly offices. Since your good father will give audience soon to suitors, I will fetch my daughter hither. Let her be questioned. She will speak the truth, and answer better than myself can do. Go, then. When you come back, you shall have justice. Queer fellow, this. Scene two. Leander, the prompter. My scheme's perhaps a strange one, but my poor father's craze is desperate, and we must get up something to deceive him. I have another purpose, too, and wish this madman, so outrageously litigious, to lose his suit. But here come all our people. Scene three. Bond in. Leander. Lantemay and Petitjean, dressed as advocates, the prompter. Pray, who are you? These are the advocates. Bond in, to the prompter. And you? I come to assist their memories. I see. And you? I represent the public. Begin, then. Gentlemen. Don't speak so loud. For if you prompt like that, they can't hear me. <coughs> Gentlemen. Put your cap on. Oh, my lord. Put on your cap, I say. I know my place. Don't put it on, then. Petit Jean, putting on his cap. <coughs> Gentlemen. To the prompter. Be quiet. I know the first part of my speech all right. <coughs> Gentlemen, when I carefully observe the mutability of mundane matters, and see amidst the various tribes of men not one fixed star, but many wandering orbs, when I behold the Caesars and their greatness, when I behold the sun and view the moon, when I behold the rule of Babylonia, pass from the Serpians to the Nacedonians, when I see Lomé change from prespotic power to memocratic, thence to monarchy, when I survey Japan... When will the fellow have done surveying? 
why this interruption i'll say no more you meddling advocate why can't you let him finish his exordium i was quite feverish with desire to hear how from japan he'd come back to his capon when you thrust in your frivolous remark counsel proceed ah now i've lost the thread courage go on you've made a fine beginning but why do you let your arms hang at your side like that and stand stock still like any statue come rouse yourself and show a little life petit jean moving his arms up and down when when i see i see say what do you see sounds i can't hunt two hares at once you know we read we read in the metamorphoses eh that the metempsy the metepsy cosis the cosis donkey donkey stop stop silly idiot silly idiot dolt dolt plague upon you plague upon yourself look at that fellow with his lantern jaws go to the deuce and you come to the point tell me the facts why beat about the bush they make me talk in words a fathom long in words that reach from here to jericho for my part i've no need of such a do in saying that a mastiff stole a capon indeed there's nothing that he won't run off with and ate it up the finest in the yard the first time that i find him there again his trial shall be short i'll crack his skull a fine conclusion worthy of the prologue it's plain enough find fault with it who may call witnesses that's easier said than done for witnesses cost dear or won't come forward we've got some all the same beyond reproach produce them then i have them in my pocket look here i've got the capon's head and legs see then and judge nay i object all right what's your objection they're from maine my lord ah true they hatch them by the dozen there my lord will you be long sir tell me that i really cannot say at least he's honest where can daunt a prisoner at the bar all that to mortal shows most terrible fortune appears to have arrayed against us in eloquence and partisanship for while on the one hand the deceased's renown alarms me on the other my opponent with practised tongue confounds pray sir subdue your overpowering accents if you please i will i've many others but however his sounding periods fill me with mistrust and the deceased one's fame yet still my lord i rest my hopes on your impartial mind before great dandin innocence is bold before this cato of our norman soil this son of justice that is never dim victrix causa dis placubit said victa catone truly he argues well so without fear i speak and advocate my righteous cause in aristotle's work on politics it has been said full well the question sir concerns a capon and not politics yes but the stagerite's authority would prove that good and evil i maintain that aristotle has no locus standi here come to the facts 
Pausanias, in his book, Discuss the facts. Rebuff facts, I say. The great James. Facts, facts, facts. Hermanopolis. I will sum up. You are so quick, my lord. The facts are these. A dog invades a kitchen, and finds a capon there of good proportions. Now, he for whom I speak is very hungry. He against whom I speak lies ready plucked. Then he whose cause I plead with stealthy step draws near, and grabs him against whom I've spoken. A warrant's issued. He's arrested counsel. Our called a day is fixed. I am to speak. I speak, and I have spoken. There, I've done. Tut, tut. A pretty way to state a case. His pace is slow and stately while he utters irrelevant remarks. But when he comes to facts, he gallops. The best part came first. Nay, worst. That's not the proper way to plead. What say the public? Quite in the latest fashion. What happens next? They come. How do they come? They chase my client. Break into a house. Whose house? Your house, my lord. Our judge's house. The cellar is invaded. Where we fled. We are accused of theft and brigandage, dragged out and given over to our foes, to Master Petitjean. You'll bear me out, my lord, that in the digest, C. Key, Canis, De V, and Paragraph, Caponibus, the law condemns an outrage of this kind, and even were it true my client, Ginger, had eaten all or part of the said capon. All he had done before should be considered in mitigation of his punishment. When has my client merited rebuke? Has not your house by him been safely guarded? When has he failed to bark at robber's footsteps? Witness three proctors, who, by ginger here, had their gowns torn. See, I produce the pieces. Will you have other proofs of his good conduct? Ah, Master Adam. Peace. But Linty May. Peace. You are growing hoarse. Leave me alone. Compose yourself and finish. Since I may take breath and am forbidden to prolong my speech, I will without prevarication, compendiously express, explain, unfold, before your eyes, the transcendental truth of this my cause, and of the facts involved. Let him say all, and say it twenty times, rather than such abridgment. Be you human, or fiend incarnate, end, or heaven confound you. I've nearly done. Ah. Uh, Ere the world was made. Let us get on, sir, to the deluge. Ere the world was made, before it was created, the world and all the universe lay buried. In the abyss of matter, earth and air, water and fire, all the elements heaped in confusion, swallowed up in space, a shapeless, indistinguishable mass, formed one vast chaos, where no order reigned. Unis erit toto naturae voltus in orobe cam gracia. Descher chaos rudis indigestic moles. Bond in goes to sleep and tumbles off his chair. Oh, father, what a fall! He's fast asleep. Father, wake up. Sir, are, are you dead? My father. Well, well, what is it? What a man he is! 
I've never had so sound a nap before. Give sentence, father. To the galleys with him. A dog sent to the galleys. Faith, I know nothing about the matter. My head's full of chaos and confusion. Lantemay, exhibiting some puppies. Come, poor children, come, cruel hearts would leave you fatherless. Come, let your innocence for mercy plead. Yes, here you may behold our misery. Make us not orphans. Give us back our father. Our father, he to whom we owe our life. Our father who... Quick, quick, take them away. Our father. What a hubbub. Take them off. They're messing all the place. See, we are weeping. My heart already melts with sympathy. Oh, tis a sight to touch a father's heart. I'm terribly perplexed. The truth is clear. The offence is proved. He has himself confessed it. But if he be condemned, how hard the fate of these poor children left to charity. I've an engagement. No one must disturb me. Scene 4. Dondin, Leander, Chicano, Isabel, Petitjean, Lantemé. My lord. Dawned in to Petit Jean and Lantemé? Yes, I will hear you, and you only. To Chicano. Good day. But tell me, please, who is that child? That is my daughter. Quick, then, call her back. You are engaged. No matter, I assure you. To Chicano? You might have told me that you were her father. Sir. Let her speak. She knows your business best. To Isabel. Speak, dear. How pretty, and what charming eyes. But that's not all. You must be wise as well. It does me good to see such youth and beauty. I've been a gay young fellow in my day, and been much talked about. I will believe it. Tell me now, who you wish should lose this cause? No one. For you I will do anything. Speak. I am sure I am much obliged to you. Hast ever witnessed anybody tortured? No, and I trust I never shall, my lord. If you would like it, you shall see it done. Ah, oh, could one ever see poor wretches suffer? It serves to pass away an hour or two. My lord, I come to tell you. I can state the whole affair, my father, in two words. It is about a marriage. You must know that all is settled, and your sanction only is wanting. Both the lovers long to wed, the father to his daughter's wish consents. Will you confirm the contract? Dondin, resuming his seat. Let them marry without delay. Tomorrow, if they please. Today, if need be. See my father's yours. Greet him, my love. How's this? What mysteries here? Your judgment is precisely carried out. I can't revoke the sentence I've pronounced. But surely you'll consult my daughter's wishes. By all means, let fair Isabel decide. Well, are you dumb? It is your turn to speak. I do not dare to appeal against the judgment. I'll do it then. Leander showing him a paper. Look at this writing, sir. You will not challenge your own signature. What is it, pray? A marriage contract, sir, all duly signed and sealed. I have been tricked, but I'll have satisfaction. This shall lead to twenty lawsuits. If you get my daughter, you shall not get my money. 
have i asked it give me your daughter i want nothing else ah father are you pleased with your day's work right well let suits flow in abundantly and i will pass my life with you content the advocates however must not be so lengthy what about the culprit father pardon him let us all rejoice to-day well let him go to isabel for your sake dear he's free i'll take a holiday then try new cases end of act three end of the litigants by jean racine translated by robert bruce boswell